Welcome to today's webinar where our special guest, Peter Van Buskirk, is going to talk to us about how to make the college interview work for you. Welcome back, Peter. We're excited to have you here once again. Ashley, it's good to be with you. Fun to talk about this stuff. Absolutely. Um, but before we dive into the details today, can you give us um, some insight or some feedback on why colleges offer interviews to prospective students before we kind of talk through the logistics and some recommendations for it? Sure. It's interesting uh, when you look back at the, the history of the college going process. When I mean history, let's go back uh, 40, 50, 60 years ago. Uh, the interview was an integral part of the college admission process. A student would decide to apply to an institution, uh, they'd submit an application, they'd sit for an interview, write an essay, and uh, you know, submit their, their academic credentials, and, and that was pretty much it. But the interview uh, was a, a good way for the institution to become familiar with, to be introduced to and become familiar with the student. And, uh, and then really focus on whether this, this particular student would make sense to that institution. Uh, as time has gone on, uh, with more and more students applying to some of the more selective schools, it's been harder and harder for, for those schools to offer interviews to all the students who might want them. But you know, back in the old days, it was a matter of uh, uh, getting to know each other, really. Yeah, absolutely. And it's, um, it's definitely something that, you know, I think it's, it may give off a different impression in terms of like the, the phrase interview itself, because you typically think of that along the lines of a job interview, which obviously you're getting to know each other, but I think that the context here is a little bit different and important to, to, um, to just define a little bit before we get. Well, get sure. I, I think, you know, when you think about a job interview, and we'll take a look at this slide, uh, to, uh, the job interview really is, is intended to uh, give the, the per prospective employer the opportunity to um, screen for, you know, talent and uh, an interview, I'm sorry, talent and, and uh, disposition for the job. You know, do, does the, do you have the right credentials? Obviously, do you have the right skill set? Uh, do you have the right personality to fit in? Uh, mm -hmm. And then, of course, uh, it, media interviews are yet a different kind of interview. When, when people do uh, interviews uh, as, as members of the press, they're trying to get information. They're trying to, to get the scoop, if you will. So uh, the, these are different kinds of interviews than, than uh, you might imagine uh, you would have for a college uh, application. So the, you know, the first one, uh, media interviews, looking for information. What can we learn about uh, you and what, you know, what kind of scoop can we get from you? The second, the job interviews, do you have the credentials, the qualifications to, to fit this particular position? College mm -hmm. interviews are, are a bit different. They, they want a little bit of the first two, but frankly, what they're focusing more on is, is the fit. And um, the assumption being that the academic credential is, is already there, um, but uh, how, might you, how might you work into the environment that, that we offer here? Got it. Yeah. So what it sounds like to me is that these interviews could end up playing a key role in who these colleges select to admit. So can you talk a little bit more about why this is and what the interview can reveal about a prospective student? Sure. Uh, going into an interview, an interviewer has got a number of, of uh, things in mind. Uh, I want to learn a little bit about the passion that you might exhibit uh, for things that you do in life. What, what are the things that give you joy in life? Uh, um, music, sports, theater, leadership. Uh, do you have a particular empathy for others? But uh, what, what kind of drives you? Then what sort of energy do you bring to that endeavor? Uh, are you passively engaged? Or are you actively engaged? Do you read all about it or do you do something? Or do you do something about it, whatever it might be? Um, interested also in commitment. Uh, if you are engaged, uh, you know, how have you allowed your uh, involvements to, to stretch you, to help you uh, learn more about yourself and to actually uh, develop perhaps some leadership uh, in, in your relationships with your peers. And finally, the, the interview can give us some insight into your values. What, what are the guiding principles of your life? Now, that, th this seems like an awful lot to, to draw out of an interview, but, but frankly, a good conversation can reveal an awful lot about uh, a young person in, in a very short period of time. Uh, so the interviewers are, are just, they, they have their, their antennae up trying to pick up hints of uh, you know, what that passion might be, where's the commitment, uh, where are the guiding principles in your life, et cetera. The interview also is important uh, for the student in, in terms of telling her story. Um, we can gain some particular insight into uh, academic irregularities. Um, 
What do I mean by that? There may be times during your high school experience where things don't go the way you want them to. Uh, perhaps there was a course or a couple of courses you wanted to take or you felt you needed to take, but you couldn't get access to them because of uh, uh, scheduling conflicts. Maybe uh, you worked really hard in a course and, and, and got a, a grade that's lower than you believe you deserved. Um, maybe you were sick or injured and there's just a lot of things that happened that affected maybe a whole semester of, of your, your performance. But whenever an admission officer sees your transcript and, and finds that things don't look the way they might be expected to look, then mm -hmm we need to understand what's going on with regard to those irregularities. So the interview is an opportunity for the student to, in the present, uh, say, this is what happened, uh, and, and help the, the interviewer to have some context for that performance. The interview can also provide some life circumstances uh, uh, that have defined you. Uh, perhaps uh, you know, there, there have been things that, that have um, happened with uh, family life, um, the, the interview is a really good opportunity for the person on the admission side to, to see, again, the kinds of things that are shaping you, that are getting you to become a critical uh, thinking person uh, in this world. And of course, then the interview gives some insight into the invisible you. And, and we talked about this in previous conversations, but the invisible you is that part of your life that won't be readily apparent in the reading of your application. It's not gonna show up uh, in your uh, extracurricular profile. It's not gonna show up in your, your academic record, but this is the part of you that, that really um, separates you from your peers. And it kind of goes back to the values we talked about, the passion, the energy, but, but the, the, there's, there's something in each person's being that helps to, to define him or her. And, then, and this is what, what can come across in an interview as well. So all of these things need to be understood um, if we're gonna give you a fair reading in the admission process. And the more we get to know, and just think about this, if, if, if we have two students who have equal credentials applying for admission and, and one has not had an interview and the other one has, given the things I just mentioned about what can come out of an interview, who do you think has an advantage uh, in, in that competition? Clearly, the more you're able to reveal about yourself uh, heading into the admission process, the better. Absolutely, absolutely. All of that makes sense. And I, I definitely, you know, I can see how that, that student who has had the interview would, would definitely have an advantage. But one of the things that I'm, I'm curious about is, are interviews required as part of the process? And if they can be this revealing and provide that level of detail, um, that extent um, of detail about the student, how, how should they be thinking about that? And how can they get a better understanding of the opportunity itself and, and when it, it would be a good time for them to do it? Yeah. Well, I, again, as I suggested, in the early days of college admission, interviews were very commonplace. And it, it was something that was assumed about uh, the, the process. If you, you wanted to apply uh, and you had an opportunity for an interview, you, you would be welcome for an interview. Uh, but the, the sheer numbers of students who are applying to many of the selective colleges and universities uh, make it in, in many ways impossible for all of those students to have uh, access to interviews. So um, many of the more selective places, places that are admitting, you know, uh, one out of five, one out of 10, one out of 20, it's, it's really hard for them to get to all the students. Uh, so, you know, many of them are, are simply offering information sessions instead of interviews. Schools that are perhaps a little less selective, I didn't say less good, but less selective, still like to, to have the interview as an opportunity to create an information exchange and get to know the candidate. Um, so I, I think that uh, where there are interviews, you need to take advantage of them uh, as much as possible. Now, even at schools that might not require interviews for admission, there may be interviews that are involved with scholarship selection. So if, if a school is offering a, a select number of seats uh, in, in the class for scholars of, of any type, they'll, they'll probably want to submit those students to uh, a series of interviews in order to get to know them better, make sure that, that they're, they're working on a good fit there. But, um, <clears throat> um, you know, it's, it's just too bad. Uh, I think a lot of us in the business regret that, that there are not more interviews available. Um, it'll be interesting to see now with the COVID-19 experience uh, what might happen with interviews because now students 
don't have the same access, at least not immediately, to college campuses. Um, as a result, many colleges and many admission offices are saying, well, listen, maybe we can offer interviews online. We can do virtual interviews. And uh, that's becoming uh, an opportunity that, that uh, students might take advantage of. I would add that um, at schools that are very selective that don't offer personal interviews on campus, uh, many will offer interviews with alumni. Um, and those interviews are probably going to take place after the student applies. Um, and, and the reason for that is that the, uh, the institution is able to sort of pre-screen all those the candidates to determine which of them uh, are, are sort of in a likely situation such that the, the interview might be a helpful uh, factor. Yeah, that makes sense. And, and I think that, you know, <clears throat> there's a lot of Zoom fatigue right now with these, but I think <laughs> it's a really important opportunity for students to take advantage of, even if it's not in the traditional way of face-to-face. -face. So that, that's, that's a great point. Um, but you know, as students start thinking about these and start scheduling these interviews, what can you tell me about the people on the other side who are gonna actually conduct the interviews with the student? Yeah, I, I think that it's, it's not a bad thing to kind of take a step back and, and anticipate this. And I, I would just preface my remark actually by saying, a lot of times parents will contact me and say, my son got an interview at XYZ school, can you work with them on prepping for that? And uh, you know, there are, really limited numbers of things you can do to prep effectively for an interview. And then we'll talk about that a little bit more coming up. But uh, one of the things is there's, there's anxiety that immediately attaches to this because, oh, I'm going to be in a room by myself with a stranger. And uh, what's that going to be like? What if they don't like me? What if I don't like them, et cetera? So I think you're right to ask now, what, uh, what, what can we know about the interviewer? So there are going to be <clears throat> people coming into the interview process, depending on the institution, from different places. There will be paid admission staff people, uh, people who are employed by the institution and they're working uh, you know, year round at, at recruiting and selecting the uh, the, the, the entering class. So these are, these are people who um, through the summer, through the year will be available uh, to, um, to, to meet with students. Uh, at some institutions, the admission office hires students to um, usually seniors, maybe some interns, students who are doing some internships in the admission office, but students who have been through the process and can be uh, discerning in the, uh, uh, the interview process. Um, so they, they may engage as well. Uh, some schools will ask professors to get involved. Now that, that's probably more likely in an instance where there's a special interview process related to an academic department. So um, there, you know, if, if a student is in a competition for scholarship or specific, uh, for, for admission into say an engineering program, uh, there may be some engineering faculty that get involved or in a music program, the music faculty get involved. So uh, it's not as common for faculty to get involved in the, the interviews, but it's, it's possible that that can happen. And then finally, I mentioned the alumni. Um, and alumni are not really engaged with interviewing on campus, uh, but uh, they're, they'll they'll be informed of students from their areas uh, who've applied to the institution and then will be able to uh, make arrangements to have meetings uh, oftentimes in conference rooms at their offices uh, or, or something like that. So th these are the people that you're likely to run into. Uh, generally speaking, the, the admission staff, the paid admission staff uh, are, are going to be um, uh, the most important here because uh, they're the ones who are our decision makers. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Um, and I think that one of the things that, you know, when you think of an interview and preparing for it, you know, you obviously want to have a sense of who you're going to be talking to so you can be prepared to have those types of conversations. So I know that there are a couple of different options outlined here, but how can a student know who that interviewer might be for them when they, when they show up? Well, it's, it's sort of a luck of the draw kind of thing. Uh, even at a school where uh, all the interviews are done by admission staff, you, you're not likely to know who that person will be until you are introduced to that person day of the interview. However, if, if you're setting up interviews in advance uh, and uh, you're, you're concerned that, that you might be in the, you know, interviewed by a student as opposed to an admission staff person, then it's okay to ask, you know, sure. the person who's setting up the interview, will this be with a student or will I be meeting with a paid admission staff person? And uh, that way you'll know in advance. And I, I would just caution, sometimes families get to the interview, they expect to see the, you know, the admission professional 
And when somebody comes out to greet them for the interview, it turns out to be a student. They're thinking, oh, geez, you know, doesn't this count? Will the student, will this person be able to, to learn what she needs to know about me to help my application, et cetera? Uh, the answer is largely yes. Um, I would add this footnote that if you find yourself in a situation where you're being interviewed by a student, uh, before you leave, either during the interview or before you leave the admission office, ask the receptionist uh, for the name of the admission person who recruits in your area. Mm -hmm. uh, so even though you might not have had the interview with that person, you at least become familiar with who that person is. Get that person's name and contact information. And you might even say, while I'm here, is it possible for me to say hello? So even if you've interviewed with a student, it's possible that you could have a, a very brief hallway conversation with the admission person who recruits at your high school before you leave the campus. And that's, that's not unimportant because now you've made, made a connection with uh, somebody who could be important in your application process. Yeah, that, that's a great, great tip. Absolutely. And, and I think that, you know, we might uh, um, take a look at the next slide here, but I, I think that, that if you have an opportunity at a college or university if, to interview with an admission staff person, you got to take it. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and why that person is a decision maker. And in any instance in, in life where you're trying to achieve a particular outcome, you want to have exposure to a decision maker. Um, so that's why even if you're meeting with the student, see if you can have that, that hallway conversation with the admission staff person before you leave. Uh, always a good thing. Got it, absolutely. And when you think about you know, whomever this may be, is it safe to say that the admission officer or the student alumni, whoever it may be, who conducts these interviews are well-trained and prepared for it? Well, in theory, yes, <laughs> uh, but it doesn't always work out that way. And I say that because good interviewers can have bad days. Sure. Uh, but but you're likely to run into people um, who have a range of experience. You could have an interviewer who's been interviewing for years, has you know 10, 15 years of experience, or somebody who's brand brand new. Uh, you could have somebody who uh, is older or somebody who's younger. You could have somebody who's male or somebody who's female. And, and I mention these things not that it matters an awful lot, but sometimes students have preferences or or, or comfort levels with. Uh, people of, of certain ages or certain um, uh, genders and, and, you know, they're trying to get the right vibe, you know. So again, we might just want to list here that, you know, that there's going to be a difference in the kind of experience that the person has. Mm -hmm. or new. There's going to be a difference in the age or the gender of the person. Uh, some of them are going to be thoughtful and interested. And frankly, some of them are going to be tired, bored, and distracted. <laughs> uh, oh. <laughs> and that happens, you know, when... Yeah. It's, it's not uncommon for an interviewer uh, on, on a college campus to be interviewing three or four students in a day and, and then kind of working around that, maybe some project things and taking some phone calls um, and trying to set appointments, et cetera. So it's possible that the, the person you're meeting with could be a very, very thoughtfully engaged person normally, but who's just distracted by other things or could be somebody who's just at the end of the day and tired and bored. Um, and you might find then that some of your interviewers are very easily conversant. They, 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 they're just, they're like friends at first sight. You know, you can have a good conversation with them. And then there's some who are really kind of challenged about asking good questions. They just aren't good at it. So you don't know what you're going to get. Even if you have a paid admission staff person, you don't know what you're going to get. Uh, I would say that among the, the different types of interviewers, you know, staff, person, student, professor, et cetera, the greatest variability here is going to be among the alumni uh, mm -hmm. because there's, there's much less direct engagement among the alumni over time than there will be uh, for the rest. I, colleges can kind of control the orientation that they, they provide for their staff. They can control the kind of training orientation they have for the, the students and the faculty. But with the alumni, it's kind of hard to tell them what to do all the time. So you just need to be prepared for um, anything, really. And, and I, as I say this, Ashley, I think it's, it's important also that the student not feel a responsibility to have to carry the interview. You mm -hmm. need to be prepared to participate in the interview. But, um, you know, if, if you find yourself in a clunker of an interview, you just kind of have to ride it out, be pleasant, and um, you might be surprised at it. How, how that makes an impact on that, uh, the person who's interviewing. 
Got it. Got it. Yeah. So it really does sound like it's the luck of the draw. And like mm -hmm. you said, being prepared for almost any situation is going to be key, just to kind of being comfortable in the unknown, I guess. Absolutely. And, and again, the key is to be yourself. Um, yeah. Don't don't try to be something or someone you're not. Don't try to uh, extend yourself further than is necessary. But uh, when you're yourself in, in this interview, uh, you can, you, you're going to be fine. Yeah. So Peter, you have, you spent 25 years in admissions. How many students would you say you interviewed? Oh, wow. Um, I'm going to put the number in well into the thousands uh, because for much of my career, uh, I, I was at Franklin and Marshall College and especially during the summer months, we would be interviewing uh, as many as six students a day, five days a week. Mm -hmm. um, now there's some days when maybe there were only uh, three or four to be interviewed at a day, but uh, it, it would be um, a, a pretty full roster of possibilities there. So uh, yeah, um, it, a lot, let's just say, uh, had a lot of really interesting and, and fun experiences. Yeah, that's, I mean, that is quite a bit. And to think about your other workload on top of that. I just, I, I can imagine that it would be challenging that, <laughs> challenging and, and hard to fight that fatigue. So how, how did you manage to stay focused and give each student the attention they deserve? Because, you know, for you, it may just be, you know, a, another thing in your daily schedule, but for the student, it, it could mean everything. And I think it's important for them to, um, you know, get, get that recognition that, and, that they, that they have prepared for it and have made the effort to come in. Well, you're, you're absolutely right. As, as distracted as I might be or an interviewer might be, the, it's important to remember that the student is, is banking an awful lot on this particular conversation. And, and so, you know, some days can be a real challenge and uh, uh, in order to, to find and stay focused. But, <clears throat> and I think each interviewer kind of develops his or her own style with regard to how to, to, to engage. Uh, when I interviewed, I my basic objective with each student I met was to try to learn something new, to, to mm -hmm. expand my knowledge, which meant that, that to a certain extent, I was taking the role of the media interviewer, digging for information, if you will. Um, but you know, it, as I was asking the student about things that were important to him uh, or to her, uh, it, I found that it would give the student more confidence in that topic and ability to speak openly about the topic, but also the excitement. You know, when, when you talk about things that are fun and important to you, you, you become more excited as you discuss them. So uh, I found that that was a way to, to really uh, at least get interviews started. And quite often then, um, as, as I'm listening, and, and that's one of the things you, you discover as an interviewer, you, the art of communication really is, is rooted in listening well. And carefully. So if you listen to what students say, that a lot of the relevant follow-up questions would be why, or can you tell me more? Um, it's easy for a student to answer, you know, a question with a yes or a no or, or a short answer. Um, and, and if that's the case, then you're not really learning an awful lot. So uh, it, you, you continue to probe and, and try to get beneath the surface. I talked about that invisible you. Well, this is how I think I was able to get at that invisible you uh, during the interview. And you know, all the interviews that I had, I, I learned a lot of interesting stuff. <laughs> uh, I, I learned, you know, the finer parts of sailing uh, from students who uh, were, were really good at sailing. I've never really sailed. I, um, I, I'll never forget, and this, this, this interview goes back probably 30 years, uh, but a young man who was fascinated with astrophysics was talking with me about some of the work he'd done that summer uh, studying the, the theory of converging parallel lines in the universe. Oh, wow. Yeah, for, for this sociology major, that was way over my head. And, and <laughs> but it was fascinating to hear him talk. And I could tell he was excited the more we were able to, to get into the conversation. So, um, you know, that's, that's what I tried to do. I, you know, and students would talk about their art. They would talk about their music. They would talk about their sport. And, and, and I wasn't so much interested in, in getting the stats, you know, how many points did you score and, and, and all that. But, but it was how did you feel? What, what, did it, what was it like, uh, you know, during during the tough games, et cetera. So um, I enjoyed hearing students talk about how they visualized their art. Um, so I, that was my strategy. And I, I, mm -hmm. I want to believe that, that most interviewers have a, a, their own strategies for kind of getting through the, the tough parts of the day. Sure. And I mean, having that personal connection to the individual that you're speaking to, it, it makes a huge difference. So 
That being said, what advice would you give to students as they start to prepare to help them to help them engage in a type of dialogue that you were just speaking to? Well, um, what would I say to them? I would say, uh, first of all, you need to, as you head into the admission process or the interview process, before you even step foot on the campus, make sure you know why you're there. What is your sense of purpose? Mm -hmm. And we've talked about this in, in other conversations, but uh, when you are purposeful about your approach to life, uh, to college, to the interview, uh, you're able to proceed with a much greater sense of confidence and direction, and, and that will carry you through. So, you know, what is your sense of purpose? Know the institution, the program, and the culture, and then where do you see the synergy in that institution? Um, so what do I mean by that? You shouldn't show up for an interview at a school where there are a lot of questions in your mind, like, do you have an economics major? Uh, or uh, what's your curriculum like? Uh, or uh, what are the residence halls like? Are, are there singles or doubles? I mean, those are really kind of superficial questions that you, you need to be getting at before in, in the research you do about the institution before uh, you visit. So know the institution, know your messaging and your key talking points. And, and what do I mean by that? Uh, if you have a sense of purpose, then you know why you want to go to college. You know why you want to look at this college. You want to know, you uh, understand uh, to some degree with the kind of opportunities that are present at that particular school. Uh, and you want to be able to, to show the synergy that exists between yourself and that place. So the, the key talking points I think are, are uh, really important too. And I'll, in a moment, I'll, I'll just share a little bit more about how that may come up. Mm -hmm. And then um, <clears throat> finally, you need to be in command of your information, the academic information and, and others. <laughs> the, one of the worst things that can happen in an interview is that an interviewer says, so uh, can you tell me about uh, your, your junior year grades? Because a lot of times students have just finished the junior year and the admission officer would like to know how things went. What are your courses and grades for your junior year? And the student kind of thinks, well, I had English and I had physics and um, I had to, and you can tell those students searching for, for more information here. And then the students say, I'll have to check with my mom about that. Mm -hmm. uh, or, or can you tell me about your, your test results? I'm not sure. I think my mom has a, you should not let your mother or your father be the curator of your information. You got to have this stuff down. Mm -hmm. So be in command. And these are the things you do before, before you step foot on that campus. Just make sure you know why you're there what the place is all about, what you want them to know about you, and, and be prepared so that you can talk about the information that defines you. Absolutely. So, you know, obviously you've already said this, but being prepared is key. You want to look like you have invested some time into this process and not that your, for, your parent is forcing you to be there or whomever it may be. You want to show that you are engaged and excited to be there. Absolutely. If you, if you seem like you're clueless, if it seems like the only reason that you're there is because your parents made you go, that doesn't go very well. I mean, it's <laughs> uh, interviewers are pretty quick at picking that sort of thing up. Yeah, that's, that's for sure. <laughs> so once you're there, uh, you need to be prepared for a thoughtful conversation. Uh, and, and the more prepared you are, the more confident you will be and the easier it's going to be to slip into some really meaningful exchanges. Um, aside from the conversation itself, there are a number of things you might want to do to, to make a, a positive impression during the interview. For example, uh, a little thing, dress comfortably. Students are always wondering, what should I wear? Um, my view is that the student equivalent of business casual is perfect. Mm -hmm. You don't want to overdress, you don't want to underdress, you don't want to dress in any way that would distract or be provocative. You want the, the, the time spent with the interviewer to be conversational, focused on, on the, the substance of the conversation, nothing else. And, and you know, if you haven't showered in days and your, your hair's a mess, uh, that's a distraction. So you want to dress comfortably and, and, and be ready uh, just to allow for a really good conversation. Mm -hmm. Show up early. Now, this is something that, that may be a bit of a surprise, but having been on both sides of the interview process as both an admission officer and as a parent, I know that there's a, a lot of angst associated with the interview, especially if you're the young person, it's the day of the interview, you know it's gonna take an hour to get there, you get in the car with an hour to get there, and all of a sudden bad things happen, like the traffic gets slow, mm -hmm. there's an accident, 
um, there's a road construction. Dad makes a wrong turn and I may have called, but been there, done that. Dads do make wrong turns, but all of a sudden there's a lot of stress in the car. Oh my God, we're going to be late. What are we going to do? They're not going to like me. And that's not a good thing. So my suggestion is add another hour to your travel time, an hour. Mm -hmm. And, and if it turns out that everything goes smoothly, you get to the campus early, great. Go to a snack bar, buy some coffee, drink it, get a student newspaper, read it, find out what's going on on that campus and watch people, see how the students and the faculty, how do they treat each other? How do they treat you? Mm -hmm. and, and you'll be amazed at how whatever stress you might have felt starts to kind of seep out of your body. And now it's time to go to the admission office for the interview. You're stressless. You're ready to go. You are next up is relaxed. Uh, yep. and just, this is the biggest thing. Uh, and when parents ask me, can you help my son get ready for an interview? I'm saying, why? Because all we're doing is adding to the stress. What we need to do is, is help him relax. So much more than what we're talking about today in terms of preparing for an interview simply isn't necessary. You just, if, if, if you prepared and you're relaxed, everything's going to be good. Now, inter introductions make a big difference. And I, I just want to pause on this one for a second, actually, because um, students don't recognize the fact that the, the, the meeting that they have, they, they, they show up in the admission office, they check in, receptionist says, uh, okay, would you please have a seat? Mr. Van Buskirk will be with you in a moment. Uh, and then the, I, I would get a call from the receptionist saying that Ashley's here for her interview. I, I come and meet you in the reception area. The introduction is important. Mm -hmm. um, because the first thing that happens, think about it. I extend, well, in the days before COVID-19, I extend my hand, there's a handshake. Um, I'm, I'm mindful of what happens in the seconds surrounding that handshake. Is it a firm handshake? Is it, a, I'm gonna wrestle you to the ground handshake? Uh, is it um, a more contemporary, uh, you know, I, I can't do all the contemporary handshakes. I don't know what they, how, how they work, but, or is it the old dead fish? And, and I think a lot of students know what the dead fish is, but it's kind of the limp wrist hanging out there. Um, the, the handshake says a lot about your, your level of confidence. As you shake hands, you need to smile and you need to maintain, establish and maintain good eye contact. Now, I'm not talking about a leering look or a cheesy grin, but a pleasant presentation makes a big difference because when the admission officer meets the student with a firm handshake, a smile, good eye contact, that's, that's very reassuring. It says that the student is happy to be there. She gets it. She knows what she wants to accomplish and this is going to be good. Um, I can't tell you how often that, that I can tell it's going to be a long interview simply by the way the student steps up and presents himself or herself um, with a handshake of one sort or another, uh, eye contact that may or may not be strong, etc. So introductions do make, we want to put this on the screen, introductions do make a big difference in, in how the rest of the interview will go. Um, now I, I also want to add here to, to this particular point, and, and I think this might be a surprise to many students, from the time that you meet the interviewer in the reception area to the time that you get to that person's office, might be 30 seconds, 40 seconds, the mm -hmm. interview starts. The interview starts, seriously. And here's what's going on. Typically, as an interviewer, I, I have the small talk. You know, uh, So how's your day going? What have you been up to this summer? Uh, but, but something just to kind of fill the time. And this is why I said, remember, the students need to have their talking points ready. Well, if maybe you've been doing some pretty cool stuff this summer, there's your opportunity to start the conversation. Well, I, I, I you know, been spending some time in a research lab, or we've been hiking the Appalachian Trail, uh, whatever it is, all of a sudden, you're able to put in my head something that's important to you. And, and remember, my objective as an interviewer was just to learn something new with each interview. So that time that we are taking to walk from the reception area to the interviewer's office is an opportunity for the student to sort of direct the conversation. And don't be surprised if the things that you volunteer during that, that small talk become the foundation for a 40 minute interview. 
it, it, it happens more often than students want to know. Students want to, students believe that there, there are certain things that interviewers are going to ask all the time. They believe there's a script that, uh, or that they're going to try to ask some trick questions. Not really. They're trying to get through the day as well, and they, they want to have a, a pleasant interview with the student. So just be ready with your talking points during the introduction. You want to eliminate distractions. Very important here because, as I said before, the focus should be on the, the words that are exchanged, nothing else. So what are some distractions? Um, well, I, I mentioned- Cell phones? Cell phones, <laughs> no, yeah, stow the cell phone, no, no <laughs> chewing gum. Um, uh, students have some nervous tics. I have nervous tics. For example, if I'm sitting for any length of time, in a conversation or in a meeting, my, my knees start to, to jiggle a little bit, you know, and, and my, it drives my wife ner nervous. Uh, she said, I'm shaking the house. But uh, yeah, it's a nervous tick. I was in a, an interview one time with a girl who had her leg crossed and, and she, she had that nervous tick. She was bouncing her leg real furiously and suddenly her clog flies off of her foot across the room and knocks my plant over. Um, she didn't want to do that. Uh, it was kind of embarrassing for her. We laughed about it, but it was a distraction, you know? I remembered that one. So uh, you want to be careful about that. And another distraction for interviewers is the conversational language you use. You want to be careful not to be talking to an interviewer the way you would talk to your friends at school in the hallway. Well, like, well, you know, he goes, she went. A rather curious use of the language. So you want to clean that up as you get into the interview. You want to focus on good body language, positive body language. You want to sit up straight. Um, again, good eye contact, smile. Uh, you know, if, if, if you have your arms crossed and you've done any reading of psychology, what, is, what does that seem to suggest to the person you're with, the, the crossed arms? Well, maybe it means you don't want to be there. Or maybe you're cold. So if, if it turns out that you're cold or whatever, just kind of work your arms to your side. You, good positive body language conveys very positive messages. And finally, you want to breathe. I've been in interviews with students who are so eager and, uh, to, to, to just kind of get everything out that uh, as, um, um, as we start the conversation, maybe I'll ask a question and, and they'll, they'll just jump right in and they talk and they talk and they talk and they talk for four or five minutes until they turn blue in the face and they pass out. There's no more oxygen in the room. <laughs> oh boy. And, and you know, you, you just want to allow yourself to, to recognize some conversational punctuation pause a little bit so that uh, the uh, the interviewer has an opportunity to participate as well but these are things you can do when you're in the interview and and believe it or not an interview is going to take 30 to 40 minutes this, this interview will go very quickly uh especially if you're prepared and and you just go prepared to have a a, a fun conversation with with a stranger Absolutely. And I think, you know, you hit on something a couple minutes ago that I think is really important. Even when you go to to greet or the individual who's interviewing you comes to greet you, that first impression means so much. And it's not just in the actual interview setting, but it's from, from the time that, you know, you first have the opportunity to either virtually or physically meet that individual. Sure. Absolutely. And, and, and I would keep in mind also, a lot of times students can, can come out of the interview having made a big difference in their candidacy. For example, I'll just tell you a, a few examples of students who I, I met uh, who prior to the interview probably would not have had much of a chance of admission based on uh, some of the general statistics that we were looking at. You know, like you said, it can make all the difference in the world for some students. So. I mean, I think the moral of the story here is number one, like you said before, if you have the opportunity to have one, take it and make sure you're prepared because they, in your words, can really show that invisible you that doesn't necessarily translate within your application. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. And, and uh, sometimes students are wondering, when should I do the interview? Uh, the best time to do it is when you're ready. Uh, and if you're a rising senior right now, um, it, 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 just be alert for any opportunities from now on. I would say until January, February of your senior year, uh, because many institutions that do offer interviews will do it uh, during that time period. Uh, some of them might be doing them by Zoom or by Skype right now, but if they offer the interview, take it. Yep, absolutely. Well, Peter, thank you so much for providing your insight and tips for how to make a, a college interview work for you. Um, I want to take a moment to ask a few questions from the audience. The first, okay. the first one being, um, 
Which is more important, an interview with an admissions officer or an interview with an alumni? That, that shouldn't be seen as an either or here. Uh, they're both important, but for different reasons. The interview with the admission officer, as I indicated earlier, gives you an opportunity to have exposure with a decision maker, and that's critical. Mm -hmm. The alumnus is not going to be a decision maker, so why might that be an important interview? Here's why. If an institution makes you aware of an opportunity to interview with an alumnus, and for whatever reason you don't take advantage of that opportunity, what is the implicit message you're sending to that institution with regard to your interest? Is it a high level of interest or a low level of interest? If you don't take advantage of the alumni interview, then you're saying to the institution, whether you intend to or not, you're saying, I'm not that, I'm, you know, interested in you. I mean, I, I want to see if I can get in, but I'm, I'm not going to go to any real length to, to invest in making this work. So my suggestion is that even if you've had an interview with an admission person at an institution and they offer you an opportunity to meet with the alumnus, it probably would make good sense to do that as well. There would seem to be some redundancy, but, but they're, they're, those interviews really serve different purposes. Absolutely. That makes sense. All right. The second one that came in is if an interview can be such a difference maker, why don't more colleges offer them? Well, as I said earlier, it's a, it's a numbers game. Many schools simply don't have the time or the staff to manage all the interviews that, that they could offer. Um, and that's why I say if, if, if you're able to wrangle an interview, even in the midst of a situation where it doesn't appear that students are getting interviews, uh, that's a good thing. So um, it's, it's, it's not a values judgment by the institution. It's not the institution saying we don't think interviews are important anymore. They're just saying, how, how can we deal with 10,000 people or 20,000 people? So, um, you know, I, again, I, I think that when you have for that personal connection, it, it should be a very highly prized opportunity. Absolutely. All right. Well, that's all we have time for today. Peter, thank you so much for joining us. We always appreciate your tips and recommendations. And for the students who have either interview scheduled or are looking to um, confirm times where they're going to go to colleges to do this, we wish you the best of luck and hope that these tips helped you in this process. Have fun. Have fun. Don't let yourself be uh, stressed out about this. This should be a fun time for you. Absolutely. Thanks for having me. All right. Well, thank you so much. And we will talk with you soon, Peter, on an upcoming webinar. Excellent. Take care. Thanks.